are you guys feeling today? Good. Good? Yes. Good to be here. Good to be here. I have been feeling actually really, really fatigued. I'm exhausted. I taught one class yesterday morning and, and walking back across the studio, I thought I was just going to fall over. And uh, I think it's this new moon. We're having a new moon tomorrow. Typically with the new moon, the energy is a lot lower. But I've also been listening to some astrologers and they say this time frame is the most intense of the entire year. Yeah, I know. And it's not going to get much better because the eclipse season is right around the corner. And I mean, for you, it may be different. Everybody's natal chart is different. But as far as the collective is concerned, it may get a little bit more chaotic and a little bit heavier. So just be prepared and forewarned. Um, and that forewarning is actually a good thing because um, I heard a great quote yesterday and I just shared it um, before all of you came in and it said, try not to fight and try not to feed the collective matrix. See if you can rise above it. And I feel like some of us are feeling just a little bit beat down. Um, so we're still going to do a blissful flow practice today. Hopefully this will energize us and give us a little boost. Um, if anything, the breathing alone can be medicinal. But our theme for today and this week has been on the fourth klesha. And the kleshas are talked about in the book of the Yoga Sutras. In the second chapter, it says, life is suffering, but suffering can be avoided. And then it talks about five different categories of which you can put suffering under. The first one was a video, which is ignorance and delusion, not knowing the true state of yourself or reality. The second one was based on the ego and how the ego can be inflated or deflated, causing disruptions of our peace, making us feel better than or less than. And then the third one that we talked about last week is attachments. And we tend to attach to things that are more pleasing or things that we love and adore. But we also have attachments towards things that can potentially cause suffering, such as trauma. We tend to define ourselves based on experience. But think about if you're still tethered to that past trauma, that situation, that emotion, that person, it goes back to the other translation of Klesha, which we've been calling mental afflictions, but there's another term for it called poison. It's just, you know, giving yourself that poison over and over again. So this week is aversions. And aversions are the things that we try to avoid because we think they will cause suffering. And the yogi's take on it is, well, if Suffering is a part of life. And if you think about your most challenging times, your most challenging times are probably the times where you've experienced the most profound growth. It's where you had to really go inside and pull up a lot of strength and perseverance. And, and you may have surprised yourself with what you were able to overcome. So I mentioned on Monday a couple different examples. I gave you a yoga example of teaching, but I'm just going to say the one that um, I put more emphasis on is the fact that uh, I, I, I don't know what it is, but I tend to attract only men who are musicians. <laughs> and, you know, it's not that I've had all bad experiences with that, but when I got divorced from a musician, I had sworn to myself, that's it, no more musicians. And even when I would purposely try to go for someone in a different career, I would find out they were a musician on the side. And I was 
single for a long period of time and really did a lot of inner work and the present relationship I'm in, which is very healthy and positive and beautiful and wonderful in so many ways, um, he's a musician. So can you see how I was projecting my past experience, especially those negative experiences, just in general and going, I'm trying to avoid that, okay? But if I had avoided that, I wouldn't be in the place that I'm in now. So that's what we're gonna be looking at when we're being contemplative today. It's what are we trying to avoid and why? I'm an Aries, I'm a fire sign. I have a really strong work ethic and a pretty strong personality and pretty strong leadership skills. In that arena, I can be very direct, but on the same token, I try to completely avoid conflict. If you hurt me, I'm gonna tell you directly in your face, this hurt me. But once I say it, I'm done with it. It's over. I can wipe my hands clean. I've gotten it out of my system. I've purged it. I've said it. But I don't hold it against you. And I don't want to fight about it. I just want to say it and be done with it. But because of that piece of my personality, it can create conflict. Because not everybody's like me. <clears throat> Right? And they can't just drop it. So I want you to consider when you're starting your practice, is there anything you're trying to avoid and why? Are you projecting the past into the present? And should you be? Right? So um, anytime we're looking at these places, it's anything that's disrupting uh, or blocking our state of inner peace. So let's start in child's pose. <clears throat> And really, you can be in any version of child's pose. Your arms are wrapped around you or extended before you. And if your head doesn't rest on the ground, I would suggest maybe propping your head up with a prop or even your arms or hands. That way, you're helping to stimulate the third eye. The third eye that gives us avenues of seeing things with new perception and new angles and to get a broader viewpoint, which is something that we need for this topic of aversions. Go ahead and observe your breath. If it's pretty shallow, begin to deepen it. If it's rough, smooth out the edges. Perhaps even noticing if your in breath or your out breath is longer than the other. And if you find that one or the other is longer, try to create an even measured breath. Sometimes it's nice to even count on the inhale and if you're arriving to the same count on the exhale, you may discover that in the next breath, you can take it up a notch. For instance, if the count was to or you may be able to increase it to five and eventually on up to six or eight.
take three more breaths. The next inhalation, stretch the arms in front of you, rock up to hands and knees. And as you exhale, you're going to scoop the belly in, hollow out the chest, and round the upper back. Inhale, move slowly into your cow tail, opening the heart to the throat. And as you exhale, draw the navel in, curl your toes under. And sail back to downward facing dog. From Adamukasvanasana, really soar upward through your seat. Take another nice deep breath in and release it out. Now we're going to begin a little bit of a mindful flow. As you inhale, come back to your knees. Exhale, come back to cat stretch. Inhale to cow tilt, saddling the back. Exhale, navel draws in. Inhale, pick up the knees, press back away from your hands, and exhale, remain. Inhale, drop to the knees. Exhale, hollow out the belly and chest. Inhale, reverse the spine. Exhale, flatten the back, hug the belly in. Inhale, pick up the knees, stretch out through your limbs. Exhale, hold. Inhale, come back to the knees. Exhale, half stretch. Push the floor away from you and your hands. Inhale, roll open, look out. Exhale, belly and ribs and chin to table. Inhale, pick up the knees, take downward facing dog. And exhale, hold. Do one more on your own. Feel free to use that Ujjayi Pranayama. From Adho Mukha Svanasana, go ahead and travel the hands back toward the toes. Pause in your Uttanasana. We're going to maintain this position to open up the backside of the body. So the yogis in the past have said that we tend to hold our past stressors, our past emotional distress, and we pack it on like a backpack. And because it's not in front of us, we're holding on to it, but we forget about it until we're faced with like an aversion. So imagine as you're drifting in this position that you're helping to unload this weight. To rise above the condition of your past so you're not projecting the past into the present. Affirming mentally within Nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. And on your next inhalation, come halfway up. 
Look down the lane of your mat, find a Drishti point, crank the shoulders back from the ears, and exhale, pour that down to Uttanasana. On your next inhale, bend the knees, get the hands to the floor. You're going to walk your hands out in front of you until you arrive to plank. And from plank position, have your arms strong like columns, holding up the architecture of your body. Allow the quads to hug into the thigh bones. And then as you exhale, hinge back from your hips to take downward facing dog. Inhale, return to plank. Lengthen the sides of your neck. Exhale, press back to downward facing dog. Do this a couple more rounds, but remember the initiation of the inhale begins the movement. The conclusion of the in-breath or out-breath completes the movement. Continue two more rounds. The head is up on plank. The head is down in downward facing dog. Now inhale, land to your knees again, but untuck your toes this time. <coughs> your hands are probably set beyond the shoulders, so travel them back so they're stacked with precision. Stacking bones and joints. We're going to pick up the right foot and flex the ankle. We're going to work into the glutes. As you inhale, you're pumping the foot up in the air. And as you exhale, the knee drops low. Inhale, lifting the right foot up. Good. Exhale, surrender it down. Continue this flow of movement, staying on the right side of the body. Feel the glutes engage and contract as the foot lifts. This is an area of the body that we sometimes avoid strengthening, which is one reason I wanted to play with the glutes today. It's usually glutes and abs. I didn't feel like abs today. <laughs> <laughs> good. Now just send the right knee down. Did I hear good? Did you say good? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Left foot lifts and flexes. And let's begin. Lift it up on the inhale, feel the contraction, and exhale, release the knee down. Doesn't have to touch the floor, but enough to re soften the glutes. You can even pause briefly at the top of the inhale, awaiting the exhale to sink the knee. A little repetition here. One more. And then just send the knee back down. All right, we're coming back to cat stretch. Inhale to cow. Inhale, hug and cinch the belly and ribs in. Exhale, Adamantasvanasana. Okay, we're just doing two more of these. Inhale to table. Exhale, cat stretch. Chin to the chest. Inhale, cow to lift the crown and the sternum. Exhale, flatten the back. Inhale, lift up. Holding down the facing dog on the out breath. And one more set. Exhale, hold downward facing dog. And now we'll start to travel the feet to the front of the mat. When the feet arrive side by side at the front of the mat, go ahead and lower back down in the Uttanasana, hopefully feeling a little bit looser in the hamstrings. Let your arms just feel off the back. Let your head fall heavy. Nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. Not 
even my aversions. So on the next inhalation, we're going to sweep the arms to the sides and up. Come into Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, come right back in to Uttanasana. Inhale, we're taking plank pose. From plank pose, we're shifting forward, lowering down to Chaturanga, but go nice and slow. We tend to just collapse. See if you can maintain your strength on the way down. And we're going to take the fist, hiding the thumb that represents the ego, and we're going to stack it underneath the hip crease, right alongside the pubic thumb. You can discern here, is it better to rest on chin or forehead? And we're going to inhale, start to lift and float both legs and feet off the ground. Now we're holding this version of locust. Legs and feet up. They're lengthening away from you. And also feel the firing in the glutes. Maintain your breath. And then exhale, send the feet back to the floor. Good. Release your hands. Bring your hands to slide up underneath your shoulders. Push up and back into extended child pose. <clears throat> Inhale, rock forward, hands and knees. Take your right arm, reach it forward towards the corner of your mat with your palm turned open. Exhale, slide it back. Now follow your gaze with that hand, Paspa Inhale, circle the right arm up and reach it over back to the corner. Exhale, slide it back beside you. Good, inhale, roll it up and over. Exhale, take it back. Two more. The nice thing about the shoulders is when the shoulders are healthy, we can have a large range of motion because they have those more mobile joints. Good, come back to table. Send your left arm out ahead, palm flips open. Slide it back, turn the face to the left. Follow your hand if it doesn't strain your neck. Lift it up and over. And exhale, take it back. Use your breath to keep it consistent. Final one. And coming back to tabletop position. Curl your toes, launch into downward facing dog. Let your head bow between the arms, affirming here as you hold. Calmness is beginning to radiate within each and every fiber of my being. That calmness comes in when we utilize our breath to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Now walk, lunge, or float the feet to the top. Lifting halfway up on arrival. Exhale, spill back down. Inhale all the way up to the top. Exhale, bring hands to the heart. Again, inhale. Exhale, pour down. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, sprouting up halfway. Good, exhale, release. Inhale, we're taking plank. Pausing here. And then we're gonna try to take our time coming back to the belly. So shift the shoulders past the wrists. Lower cautiously down. See if your thighs, belly, chest can land about the same time. 
And we're going to, if you have your block straight in front of you, you may want to slide on the leg for now. Um, I'm going to do something that I learned in college class last Friday. We're going to extend the legs back and take the hands, palms open at the sacrum. And on the inhalation, you're going to first take the right arm and reach it out in front of you, lifting your head and chest like a half lotus. Then on the exhale, the right arm swims around, palm up at the sacrum, coming back to the chin or brow. Yogi's choice. Inhale, left arm's going to circle wide to the left, reach out in front, and exhale, coming back to the floor. Alternating sides when you lift on the inhale. Exhale, coming back down. Even on the diaphragm muscle can make it a little challenging to stay with your breath. But remember, that's one of the most important parts or aspects of yoga. Let's just do one more to each. Keep your legs lengthening back, your pubic bone pressing down. The glutes are not quite as fired up, but they are assisting. Now, surrender the hands up underneath the shoulders, push up and back into extended child pose. From here, slide your arms back enough so that you can widen the distance between the knees. With your right arm sliding forward again, open up your left palm, sail it underneath the right arm, come to the fingertips on the right hand to take that right arm out of your viewpoint. Three deep breaths here. Inhale, lift up, send your left arm ahead, flip your right palm, thread it underneath, lower towards your right temple, come up to the left fingertips, and then out through the left side body, and breathe. Now, release the right arm. Draw the knee so they're more parallel, rocking up to table, curling the toes, launching into downward facing dog. And on your next inhalation, you can determine here do you want to walk? Lunge or float the feet forward, stacking the hands to the shins, lengthening out to the vertebrae. Exhale, folding back down again. Aim this replenishment from the mind, since this is still considered a half inversion. Inhale, coming all the way up to the top. Exhale, bringing hands home to the all right, we got one more flow. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, dive in. Inhale, pick yourself up. That's why most of us are here. So if we're a little pick me up, right? <laughs> Exhale, release. Inhale, take plank. Oh, that's one. Rock forward, lower down the chaturanga. 
nice and slow, slow and steady, and then sink to a prone position, untap the toes. This time, the arms are going to reach out in front of us. We're going to do that swimming variation of locust. And again, I want you to pay attention to your glutes. This is one of our emphasis today. Inhale, lift your right arm, head, chest, left leg. And then exhale, release. Inhale, left arm, head, chest, right leg. Exhale, release. Now, if you really want to amp it up, which, you know, I don't necessarily suggest. It's tomorrow's the new moon. <laughs> but if you want to amp it up, you can hover all the limbs. And then lift higher on your in-breath. And come back and hover on the out-breath. I've been so fatigued. I'm coming all the way down, but check in with yourself. What do you need? What do you desire? You can make the practice your own. Try not to allow the movement to be mechanical. Coordinate it with breath. That coordination with the breath being in control will carry us into the state of yoga. Reclaiming that inner contentment and peace. All right, we're going to end with the left arm, right leg. Slide your hands under your shoulders, power up into tabletop position. Now, make sure the belly's hugging in. We're going to take thread the needle, flipping the left hand open, curling it underneath the right arm. And we're going to reside in stillness a moment and breathe into the backside of the heart. Notice the difference in your breath. Perhaps the count is different than what you built it to in the beginning. Inhale, return to table. Exhale, flip your right hand. Let's take thread the needle. Try to stay in the active formation of this pose. There is a way to let go and be really in life. But try to keep it active. And feel free to close your eyes. Inhale, exiting out. Curl the toes under, launch into downward facing dog. This is going to end our Surya Namaskar practice. So you, you can meditationally walk, lunge, or float through to Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, release. Inhaling up to the top. And exhale. Hands to the heart. We're going to change up this movement here. On the in breath, we're going to lift the arms. And this time, the hands are going to be facing forward. And the right knee doesn't have to look very high, you guys. Just lift the knee and foot. As you exhale, the arms come down as you step back with your right foot. And be on the ball of the foot. I want your heel off the floor. Kind of like a little crescent lunge. 
Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, the arms come down and we start to lower the right knee, but not all the way to the floor. Inhale, pick it up. Exhale, arms and knee come down. Good, continue three more rounds. Inhale, step it forward. We're going to take that to the other side. Arms lift up with the left knee. Exhale, step it back into that lunge. The arms can release beside the hips. Re-erect the spine. Arms float alongside the ears. Exhale, keep the back toes curled. Sink the knee lower. Inhale up. Exhale down. Continue that repetition. Two more. Last one. Step the back foot forward. This is where you may need blocks. Okay, so if you don't need blocks, your hands are going to be set forward of your toes. And really, you're looking for a similar distance between your hands and feet that you would in tabletop position. Okay, so take it about that far out in front of the feet. I'm trying to determine if all the blocks or not. And then stay stationed on your left foot. Pick up your right leg. Exhale, bend the standing knee, contract and curl in. Inhale, push the left foot down, right leg back, head comes up. Exhale, contract and curl in. So the blocks can assist with stability too, and they can turn to different heights. Two more. Last one. Now re straighten and structure the right leg. This time the right foot's going to lift and flex like we did in that earlier tabletop position. Focuses on the glutes. Oh, you know what? Here, take these. All right, when you're ready, inhale, you're pumping the foot skyward. Feel the contraction and work in the glute muscles, and exhale, you can relax. Good, that's our new flow. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, release. Three more. It's okay to put a soft bend in the standing leg as you exhale. And you can re-straighten on the inhale. Release the right foot. And we'll do the contraction and curling in first before the glute work. So inhale, extend your left leg, lift your head up. Exhale, draw in, nose towards knee. You got it. Flow with your breath. Last one. Now lift the head up. Straighten the right leg, flex the left foot. Now emphasis in the glutes. Inhale, pump the left foot skyward. Exhale, relax. Inhale, pump and lift. Exhale, softly release. A few more rounds. Now 
Now descend the left foot. Lift your heels, come down towards a toe balance. And we're just going to use the blocks or hands to help us come down to the floor. Yeah. Your feet are going to be set as ahead of your hips. Lift up your chest. Exhale first, draw the navel in. It's kind of like you're puffing back into your kidneys. If you need your hands to assist, use them. Otherwise, the arms can release. And you're slowly rolling down to the mat. Open up your arms. Float your feet and stack your knees right over your hips. So we're not tucking them into the chest. Okay, your feet can dangle. Yeah, let the feet dangle towards the glutes. And then you're just rocking the knees about six inches to the left, feeling that piriformis and drawing back through center. Taking about six inches over to the right. Returning to center. And then taking it a little farther to the left. Back through center. To the right. Back through center. So each time you do this, you're going a little bit wider with your knees. Now, not just stopping on the piriformis, but rolling beyond. We're just massaging those glute muscles. Bringing in a little spinal rotation with the low back. Notice how you may have to grip in your core. So you're not tempted to bring the knees all the way down to the earth. Now you have permission moving to the left to drop the knees to land the feet and to just be. Now the focus is on the twist. Return to your breath. Open it up. Um, and here, new life, new energy, new consciousness is flowing through my being. Let's draw the knees back through center. And you're allowed to send the knees all the way to the right. Filling out into the twist. Returning home to the breath. I'll circle that left hand over to your right side. Build yourself up to take one block. And then once you have that block in your hand, roll back to your spine, sink the feet down to the sticky mat. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up into bridge, holding the block between the knees. And we're going to test the glute strength. Okay, so let's take the block between the thighs or knees. Push down through the soles of the feet and lower the arms right beside your body. Now you are drilling down through your outer shoulders and upper arms. 
you are tightening in your glutes, contracting those muscles. And we're going to keep that block held between the knees, but slowly lift the left foot up and down. Now, when I say up and down, it's like your leg is pointed in a diagonal line from your shoulder to your hip to your knee, to your toes. So it's not up towards the ceiling. If you feel one side, right, usually on this side, would be your left hip dip down, you know you need to strengthen your glutes more. Lower the foot. Squeeze the block, tuck and lift. You don't have to lift very dynamically. It's more of a low bridge. But now see if you can fly the right leg up. The diagonal line from the shoulder to the hip, hip to knee, knee to toes. If your right hip dips, you know you need to strengthen your glutes. Lower the right foot, come back down. We're going to lift into bridge. This time, we're moving the block from the knees and slipping it underneath the back, the low back. This time, the arms aren't really needed, so fan your arms slightly, not as wide as a T. Rotate the palms open and breathe. Now the glutes can relax. We have support. And then if the legs up to waterfall. And the feet could be active or passive. So there are good reasons to avoid certain poses if you know it's not good for your body. For instance, shoulder stand, it's not good for every single person. And if you are one of those people, get familiar with this pose because this is a beautiful pose to do in its place. Where it's not asking too much for the neck. You're still getting the benefits of being averted. Three more breaths. Land the feet to the floor. Tuck and lift away from the block, send the block to the side. And once you lower down one vertebra at a time, you're going to pick up the feet and your hands are going to land to the tops of the knees. And then you're just going to circle the knees several times in one direction. Several times in the other. And roll to your right side. That allots a little bit more space for the physical heart. Push down into your left hand and slowly sit. Now you can sit on a block. You can also sit on a bolster. We are going to do the Tonglen meditation, the one I typically avoid. 
The reason why I typically avoid this meditation is because I'm super sensitive. I'm an empath. We're all an empath to some degree. Um, but I will say the longer you do yoga, the more sensitive you become. So the Tonga meditation, I have a feeling Mandy's done this before. Yeah. Has anyone heard of this meditation before? Okay. This comes from the Tibetan Buddhist branch. Do you guys know uh, Prima Shulman? She's a famous author. I think she's actually left the Shambhala tradition now, but um, this is something that she often leads. Kate Moyer used to teach at Half Moon, used to teach this meditation. Stephanie teaches it in our teacher training, and I usually excuse myself. <laughs> um, so what it is. We're going to do some mindful breath work first, and then we're going to start to feel and face our own pain, anguish, and suffering. And you're breathing that in, and then you're breathing space and compassion out. Okay, and then we're going to sit with breathing in someone else's pain, anguish, and suffering. So for instance, if you know someone suffering with a disease right now, if you know someone suffering going through a divorce or just having some type of hardship, you're going to breathe that in for them, feel it for them, and then you're going to lovingly release. So my hard part is the release. And then we're going to breathe in for the earth because the earth has gone through a lot. It's been abused a lot. And we're going to take in her pain, anguish, and suffering. And then we're going to try to send her loving, kindness, and compassion back as we release. Okay. And then you'll get Shavasana because I don't want you to, in case you haven't uh, the same experience that sometimes I do, I want you to definitely get Shavasana. Okay, so let's just sit tall for a moment and doing some mindful breath work. So I want you to go back into creating an even measured breath. So begin counting from the beginning of your inhale to the top of your inhale. The count that you arrive to is what I want you to take it to on your out. Do that a couple more rounds. Same count. See if you can increase it by one. it by two. When you're doing your breath work, I want you to breathe in your own pain, anguish, or suffering. Even if it's something coming up to your mind that you think you have overcome. I 
exhale, release all the judgment, loving kindness, and compassion. Say internally and silently again. I see you, I feel you, I love you, I release you. Sink your hands to your lap. Have your palms open this time. And imagine you're receiving the pain, the anguish, and the suffering from someone you know, someone you know that's going through a hardship. Receive it from them and for them. Lovingly allow yourself space. Send them compassion as you breathe out. Remember how to feel, to deal, to heal. Lovingly face their adversity. See it in your heart. Love and compassion oozes out. Breath work and meditation has been outcomes helping to transmute the energy. The left hand over your heart, right hand back. Picture them in your mind's eye. I see you, I hear you, I feel you, I love you, I release you. your fingertips down to tap the earth. If your arms don't quite reach, it's okay. They can rest in your lap. Consider the pain, the anguish, and the suffering has happened upon this planet. Above and below.
breathing your pain, your anguish, peace and suffering. Center back, loving kindness, and compassion. As the rivers flow upon the surface, and the rivers flow from the earth, and the rivers flow from the See you, hear you, see you. Love, respect you. Embrace you. wish to stay with this meditation, you can continue this. Community, the world, the universe, your ancestors. Just begin to relax and be one with nature. Create your own spirituality. See why I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's use a cleansing breath to release that meditation. Breathe in through the nose. Audibly and out through the mouth.
Encourage yourself to begin to create some gentle movement before you begin to exit out of this pose that you chose. Finding your way up to a seat. Next time you have some space in your schedule today or this week, notice if you try to avoid being with yourself and connecting back to source energy. Notice how we tend to want to fill up our time with other things, with other distractions. And commit to reconnecting back to yourself. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. 